Hi, in this video, I'll be introducing the Voronoi Polygon data function for Tipco Spotfire. The idea behind Voronoi Polygons is that if you consider a few points in XY space, the space can be partitioned into polygons that show which of the points is the nearest. For example, for any location within this red area, the closest of the four points is this lower one. This process can be continued with any number of points, each generating a surrounding polygon. To show a real example, I have a series of point locations on a map. Each location has a measured 1D precipitation value, which is used to color code the points. There are some patterns, but the variation and outliers in the data make these hard to see. I lasso a bunch of these points to mark them. This kicks off the Voronoi polygon calculation using the data function I'll be walking through in a moment. You'll see here an individual polygon drawn for each point I marked. These polygons are nice, but they have not reduced the variability in the data. I'd like to aggregate these data points so each polygon represents a few points. One of the input parameters lets you control the aggregation, so here the individual variability is a bit less crazy and you can begin to see the broader pattern. Using these same aggregation settings, if I mark a larger region, I can see a strong band of precipitation. This data function is available on the exchange with a Spotfire tag. If you go to the page for this component, you'll see a brief overview a place to download the most recent release. Also, a link to a version on the cloud you can see right away to see some of the capabilities in action. The cloud version shows one use case where the Voronoi polygons are used as a framework for displaying data. As a filter is applied to the underlying data, the visualization changes. Here, we're stepping through time. You can see a pattern change through space and time. The data shown here is from the storm in March of 2019, known as the bomb cyclone. You can see the bands of precipitation moving across the country. The exchange page also contains a user's guide to the data function that explains all the input parameters and outputs, as well as a link to our main page on Tipco Spotfire Location Analytics. So let's see how this works. Here I've got some precipitation data. These are measurements from a single 24-hour period from a number of ground stations. This data is a snapshot of precipitation during the March 2019 storm. The data are from NOAA's website from a large network of ground stations. The coverage extends worldwide. I'll display this data in a Spotfire map chart. All I have to do is bring in a map chart and Spotfire automatically recognizes latitude and longitude. It's also automatically chosen the variable elevation to size the symbols by. I'll switch both the color and size to vary with the precipitation level. We can see there are some strong bands of precipitation that occurred. I'd like to get a sense of the broad patterns of precipitation and average out some of the variability. To do this, I'll use the Voronoi data function. We have several data functions that do a very similar process of generalizing point data to show an overall spatial pattern in an area. Besides Voronoi, there's the heat map data function, as well as the contouring and the hex bin data functions. Each of these has slightly different characteristics. The Voronoi data function lets you create a display as I'm showing in this video. Plus, it lets you overlay aggregated values across point data, and it supports the live filtering as we saw in the cloud version. Here's the process to use the data function from the exchange. Once you download and unzip the file from the exchange, you'll see several examples and help files, as well as the main asset, the file which ends in .sfd. This version will update as ongoing changes are made. To use a copy in Spotfire, I'll browse to the data function menu Click on import and locate the .sfd file. This brings up the data function. Use this run button to insert the data function into the Spotfire file. This brings up the input output dialog box. All the inputs are shown here along with a brief description. Only the first two inputs are required, the rest can be left blank. These first two get connected to the latitude and longitude columns in the data. It's usually valuable to aggregate several points together per polygon. This reduction factor specifies the average number of points grouped per polygon. We can generate just polygons here, but here's an optional input where we can also specify numeric columns to aggregate. For the output here, we'll only be using the first object, which will become a data table called Voronoi. We'll add the results of our calculation to our visualization. One easy way to do this is simply to open the data panel and find the new table. The Voronoi table has a geometry column that contains the tiles. We can simply drag this column onto the map into the target area that appears. 
We'll set the polygons to be colored by our aggregated values of precipitation. We can turn off the source points to see the overall pattern in the polygons. We can also change the appearance, for example, the transparency. By default, the outer boundary of the polygon region is the convex hull of the starting points. One option is to provide a bounding polygon to use instead. Here, I've got a simple table of latitudes and longitudes that define the continental U.S. outline. Going back to the inputs of the data function, I can connect these columns to the appropriate locations and rerun the data function. The results will be trimmed to the outline. Here I've illustrated how to use the data function to create a Spotify visualization that generalizes point locations so that an entire region is covered with polygons. Two common use cases are covered step by step in the user's guide. The first use case addresses the situation where you have two types of locations. In one group of locations such as wells, you would like to estimate some geological information such as porosity. Geological information is available in the area, but at different actual locations. Here we create Voronoi polygons for the geology data. The aggregated geology values in the Voronoi polygons are then overlaid onto the well locations, so these now have estimates for the geology parameters. In the second use case, we like to visualize data that varies both in time and space, for example, the storm data. The best way to go about this is to use Spotfire's native filtering capability for the time variations and to leverage the polygons as a visualization framework. This is accomplished by appending a polygon index to the starting data and using this to link the data tables. This is also detailed in the user's guide. Mm -hmm.